Welcome back, Hell Divers. Last time I made a tips and tricks video, I went over everything I knew about the game. It was 50 plus tips and tricks, and I think it was actually more than that. I just stopped counting at 50. And then I read through the comments on that video and also on TikTok and other areas that I was posting, and I've learned more since then. I'm now 70 hours deep into the game. So if that video was like noob to pro, this video is like pro to godhood. And there is some crazy stuff like secret rare variants of enemies, which I actually have footage of, um, hel hidden helmet stats, uh, smoke and stealth mechanics, so, see how many of these you know. Of course, any corrections are welcome. In fact, sometimes during this video, I'm going to challenge you to get me footage of these certain things because there's still a lot of disagreement on some of these aspects. But yeah, let's get into it. Right, let's talk about variants in enemies. This is a charger, but it's a charger variant. It is a charger behemoth. The normal chargers don't have this heavy duty armor but if you catch one of these guys it's like it's a pokemon if you get killed by them it will say charger behemoth they have additional armor i don't know what else they have i'm assuming more health i'm not even too sure whether you can shoot off their front legs to get that weak spot but really cool and you guys actually pointed this out to me i had footage of it in my last tips and tricks video and multiple comments like what the hell is that at this timestamp I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's a charger. And then I went back and checked the footage. I'm like, wait a second. This is not any normal charger. This is called a charger behemoth. And I don't think I've seen it again. Let me know if you've encountered it before. But super, super cool. There are variants of enemies. I'm not too sure what spawns them. This was only on a level four difficulty. Uh, I'm not too sure if they come out towards the end of the match. There was still 19 minutes on the clock here, so it wasn't kind of the end. It wasn't a hell diver difficulty. Is it nighttime? Is that the moon in the background? Is this like their version of it, the sun going down? Don't know. Really cool though. Different variants of enemies. You notice it a lot with the automatons. It's very easy to notice the different variants like the, the Hulk. Uh, I guess like a flamethrower and like a rocket version, but really tough to notice the charger variants. Right, let's talk about Bile Titans and using the railgun. This is probably the most common thing you see uh, with the Bile Titans is just you can you can one tap it in the head with a charged shot uh, from the railgun on unsafe mode. It's probably the, the most common thing you see people say, like they're very easy to take out. And yes, railgun is obviously extremely effective, but this is kind of the myth busting I was doing because I think it is, in, well, in my experience, it has been incredibly inconsistent. Yes, sometimes I one tap them, but other times I do not one tap them. I shoot them when they spew, when they uh, when their mouth glows green. It stops the animation. It stops the spew and you stop that. Sometimes the head will just pop and other times it will not. And this is my challenge for you. I think a bunch of stuff is happening with Bile Titans. I think there's a potential for them to be like Charger Behemoths and there'll be like a variant of Bile Titans that just have more health. I also think that maybe the Bile Titans that come up during the bug ambushes uh, uh, actually have less health than maybe the boss bug titans that are the bile titans when you do missions. I also think there is likely a crit stat or a hidden crit stat that could be tied into the railgun or it might just be tied up in general to the damage because of the inconsistency with headshots. It might be tied up with how much you charge the railgun. Like the more you charge it, the higher crit chance it has. Uh, or, I mean, obviously, it probably does more damage. That helps as well. But yeah, there, I think there is a lot of randomness in this game built in, which makes it feel so good because you get all these epic moments. Sometimes you will have single shots on bile times. Their head just pops. and Other times, they just eat it up for breakfast and keep chasing you down. I do think that's intentional. I don't know exactly what's causing it. If you, if you can show me but single shot on a bile titan every single time and it heads pop in a live environment i mean i'll bring i'll bring the twitch audience over we'll watch you do it because anyone can put a montage together of just single shotting them you just by yourself one shotting bile titans with a rail gun in unsafe mode and consistently do it uh i'll, I'll give you some subs okay 
Now, what was way more consistent for me is actually shooting a rocket at their abdomen when they do that charge up. I got that to pop way more consistently with a rocket launcher. And the cool thing that it does is if they don't die and you destroy that, they can no longer spew at you. So then they only have one move sent, which is like they got to get nice and close and then stomp on you. Very cool. Okay, hidden helmet stats. If you go to your helmets, you'll notice that it doesn't actually have any stats on the helmet itself. However, if you, collect, if you check your overall armor stats and then change your helmet, you'll see that some helmets actually impact that. This helmet actually increases the speed and stamina regen stat. Is it a lot? No, it's like six points on the speed stat. So of course we had to do a running race. I put on a, a helmet that didn't impact that speed stat. A friend put on the helmet that did impact that speed stat. We had the same armor on. We did a running race. Was it noticeable? No, it really wasn't. I don't know if it is a visual bug with the stats or something left over from the development and if stats are meant to be on helmets, but I think when people talk about the hidden stats of helmets, it is so small, <laughs> I do not think you will notice it. Right, I had a lot of disagreement about this one, both in my Twitch chat and in YouTube comments about stratagems and whether they track or they don't track, so I got some better footage. Here's what happens. If you throw a uh, red stratagem at a friendly or an enemy, it will stick to them. However, if they then move, the red stratagem will hit in the place where it first landed. Okay, you can see this with this eagle bomb. The person moves away, the eagle bomb lands in where it first landed, where it, where it first made contact. The really cool thing is if you accidentally get stuck by a precision strike, by, by a stratagem, and it's on your backpack, because they seem to stick to the shield of the backpack because it's like an object, you can drop your backpack and avoid being killed. Now, blue stratagems, friendly stratagems, tend to track with the exception of reinforce. Reinforce almost acts like a red stratagem and it will actually just go down to where they first, uh, where the initial contact was made. Other blue stratagems like a Gatling gun or a sentry turret, um, even resupplies will actually track. If your friend gets stuck with these, if they don't want to die, they need to drop their shield backpack if that's how they got stuck. If I'm assuming you can get stuck even without the shield backpack, it's definitely easier to get stuck with the shield backpack. But um, yeah, it, it's game over if you don't drop that backpack. Right, this is a correction on my behalf. Uh, last video, I said that the timer is a bit of a suggestion. And when the timer runs out in missions, you just lose stratagems and you can still complete missions. Now, this is the great thing about this game. There's a lot of nuance here and that's not quite true. There are a couple missions that if you run out of time, you will automatically fail them and you actually can't complete them after the timer, even though you don't have stratagems. Uh, the evac of the civilians and the blitz mission, I believe it is, where you have to destroy... Is it blitz? Oh, you know, I, look, just be aware there are a couple of missions that you will automatically fail if you don't complete on time. Now, oppositely, there are missions like destroy the eggs here where you can complete it after zero. You can be sitting on zero, you can have no stratagems, and you still can complete the main objectives and pass the mission. So a little bit more nuanced than what I originally said. Right, here's a nice glitch for you. If you're holding a grenade, so you press four on keyboard and mouse, and you only have three grenades, and you pick up uh, a grenade box in the wild, you end up having five total grenades. You have to be holding one, so not not um, don't pull the pin, like not the quick not the quick but like quick grenade throw button but actually select the grenade i'm not too sure what it is on, on controller i think it's four on keyboard and mouse so it's, it's in your hand but the pin's not pulled and you pick up a grenade you get five it doesn't work if you've only just got three in your inventory and you don't have it in your hand you just get the max of four pretty nice because sometimes i always find that i'm i'm just one grenade short for a bug hole so you can stock up on grenades so you could overfill them basically Okay, this was actually from a comment and they said if you crouch down and then interact with the salute You can avoid the emote am animation altogether Pretty cool. So if you are in a bit of a pickle and you want I don't know pick this up as you're running through I guess you could duck down just at the last minute open it up and then get out of there
Right, I wanted to test, can you be a traitor and evac? Would the evac leave if all your friends were there? Would it go away? Uh, could you even get on it? So in this clip, I became a traitor. I got everyone nice and close to the, ev the evac ship. I got them to get on it whilst I was being bombarded. If you don't know, if you haven't seen my last video, once you get the traitor uh, <laughs> debuff, you get <laughs> orbital bombardments. And we're about to find out if you can jump on the ship. There you go. You can still evac as a traitor. Now, I knew that you could throw grenades back at enemies like the automatons, but did you know you can throw friendly grenades back at them? Right, this was another comment. When you have the supply backpack, you can juggle the backpack to get more supplies. So I'm holding a supply backpack, and when I go to the resupply, I'll get like a little brick back. Now, what I can do is then drop it, I can give it to a friend, they can pick it up and then they can hit the resupply again. And this will fill up another brick of the supply backpack. So if you really want to uh, never worry about ammo again, you can do this with a team. Okay, I spent a long time on stream doing this like detection stuff to see when enemies would detect you. I think the most important thing to say is that obviously line of sight impacts enemies detection, but also prone running or uh, crouch walking also impacts enemy detection. From the small amount of tests that I did, I need to like spend a whole video doing this, but I had the stealth perk on my armor and I got within 16 meters of an enemy while scrolling. My friend here also, sorry, they did not have the stealth armor. They had like heavy armor on or something else. They didn't have the stealth perk and they also got within 16 meters of the enemy. And you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think that that stealth perk only impacts uh, movement, either jogging or running or like standing. It didn't seem to impact when you're crawling. So if you don't have the stealth perk on your armor, be aware that you can use uh, crawling and prone to get around enemies a lot easier without them seeing you. Right, I think that the shield generator is probably the best stratagem in the game. I talked about how it blocks a lot of things. I didn't have footage last time, but this is it blocking a charger. You don't get all that um, like interference on your screen. You don't get knocked over, knocked back. It is just an S, S tier stratagem. Okay, this is another comment from you guys. Uh, impact grenades on the back of the automaton's grill do uh, pretty decent damage. In my experience, two grenades seem to blow everything up. These turrets only took two impact grenades. I also use it on a tank, which is really nice because sometimes you're just out of the equipment you need. And you can use it to destroy the factories. You do kind of have to be right on the tip, just the tip, right on the edge to blow it up. It is a little bit harder than normal grenades, but you can use it for factories too. Right, I wanted to test the anti-material sniper. I had a lot of people say, this is really good for automatons. It's a really good weapon. I don't like it at all. Um, you can shoot the weak, weak spots. I think it took about four shots on a Hulk. The Hulk actually has an animation, which I hadn't seen before, and it lights up. I guess this is similar to the bleed mechanic on the charger. And if you leave it long enough, it will eventually just explode once it gets those, like it's on fire. You can also shoot the Hulk directly in the front, in the face plate. Now that is really good. Uh, I will admit that is a nice strategy. I still find that the sniper, the anti-material sniper just it needs something to make it a little bit more user friendly. I think it has too much weapon sway. Um, maybe it was probably too overpowered if it was too snappy, but with all the stuff and explosions and, and things impacting your aim, I still find it not to be the best weapon. I'd rather just probably use an auto cannon. However, it is kind of nice when you get those headshots. An interesting thing to note, obviously you can use it on the back of tanks as well. I think it took five shots to light up the tank. However, the weird thing with the tanks is that you could set it alight similar to the Hulk and it would catch on fire, but it never blew up. The Hulk, once it was on fire, it eventually just blew up. It had like a timer on it. Whereas the tanks I found, I think it took five shots. It lit up the tank, but then the tank just kept on going. I had to go in there and finish it off. Not too sure what's going on there. Okay, smoke. We played around with smoke for literally hours to see how it would work. And uh, the 
<laughs> what did I come up with? I don't know. It is very inconsistent. We did Hell Diver missions with smokes only. You can have orbital smokes and you can have eagle smokes. You can have two lots of smokes. You can have a smoke grenades. I was running a full smoke kit. I will say that even though it is inconsistent, like some enemies I feel like still see you through the smoke, it definitely worked at disengaging from the enemy, especially in something like Helldivers difficulty where they just seem to run after you the entire way across the map. I found to use a, uh, I found the best thing to do is actually use all your stealth techniques together. You use the smoke to disengage, you then try to get behind cover, you then start crawling, and that really sent the enemies into like uh, the like search and destroy mode. They sort of got disengaged, they got de aggroed, and they couldn't find you, and sometimes they would reset back to their like patrol positions. Right, there was a comment on my last video that when you activate the terminals, the, the CF terminals, that it doesn't actually spawn enemies. Because my advice was to get all the canisters close to the terminal before activating it. And that uh, <laughs> this would prevent them from essentially spawning and causing grief. Now, when, this, when I was trying to test this, uh, a patrol walked past. And so I still am not sure whether it always triggers a patrol to go past if you've activated the terminal already or if that was just pure coincidence in my experience i have found when activating the terminals uh for the artillery a patrol goes close by i don't know though if that is the activation of the terminals or if they have just generally set it up that patrols go near points of interest there you have it that is pretty much all of my knowledge about this game if you've got any other tips or tricks, let me know. And if I get enough, I'll put it into another video. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot leave a comment, you can leave the word Charger Behemoth. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Mullet Games. Peace.